in our uh, weekly Quran study. We are continuing to uh, study the very first surah, Surah Al-Fatiha, and uh, I think this is our eighth session. Uh, all right, so Dr. Yamina will continue to uh, host the study, and we're welcome to join in with comments and questions. Jazakallah khair, Thank you, Isra. A'udhu billahi al-alim shaytan al-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. so yes this is وعليكم السلام. so this is our eight uh, week and we are approaching the end of this very important and beautiful uh, very concise uh, سورة سورة الفاتحة which is the first Surah in the Quran. Uh, we stopped last week at Ihdina uh, Sirat al Mustaqim, guide us onto the path, onto the straight path. And I mentioned how uh, Imam Nursi, rahimahullah, he, he explains the Sirat al Mustaqim as the path of moderation and justice. And we know that balance and moderation and justice are very important concepts in the Quran. We are told that we were made an Ummah Wasata, which is a, a community that is moderate, a community that practices moderation and justice. And we saw how moderation is related to the Bindal way, which is the way of justice. And that this middle way, this way of balance is not quantitative is not about quantity but it is qualitative so it's not about uh, eating little instead of eating a lot but about the quality of our eating mindfully consciously in the name of god uh, not only choosing what we eat and how we get what we eat in the Halal way. I'm not using halal only in the in the class in the traditional way or the the commonly uh, taught way. But if something is not in the name of God, it is not uh, included in the halal, even if it is so called halal. And so you see that it's about its a qualitative way of interacting with things. And it is about a state of being in balanced ourselves. So that is the, the state of following the Sirat al-Mustaqim. And uh, I had mentioned that it is related to maintaining the balance of the three powers. If you remember, the three powers were or are, since we all have them, al-quwa shahawiyya, which is the power of appetites that is given to us to attract benefits, and al-quwa al-ghadabiyya, which is the power of um, passion, maybe, I don't know if it's good translation, but what we mean by it is more important than how we name it, which is uh, the the way we repel harm and therefore protect ourselves, and al-quwa al-aqliya, which is the power of intellect, which is given to us to distinguish between what is beneficial and what is harmful. Uh, and you can see that there is this balance. Is it beneficial and is, or is it harmful? Because sometimes something may look beneficial in the short term, but it could be harmful in the long term and vice versa. And it could look to us beneficial where, in fact, it is not. So we have to be clear about our, our perception. And the more we consciously decide to use these three powers uh, in a balanced way, uh, we realize that we do need divine help, divine guidance. And so we need this divine guidance, Hidayah, in order to use these three powers in the best way, in the easiest, because maybe we could find, I don't know if we could ever, but like uh, 
we don't want to go through lots of hardship to find, uh, to stumble on something that may be useful. So the, the, the Sirat al-Mustaqim, the straight path, is the direct way, the shortest way, the best way, the easiest way to uh, use these three powers in the most beneficial way so that these powers become a, a ni'mah to us, a blessing to us, instead of a ni'mah, instead of uh, misfortune. And this path, this uh, Sirat al-Mustaqim, this path of ease and easiness, is also the path that leads to the fulfillment of human potentials. That's the way it is through uh, finding the balance and finding the best way to attract what is most beneficial and repel what is harmful that we get to uh, fulfill our human potential. And so how is moderation in these three powers related to justice, to well-being, to wisdom? Um, last week I did share some uh, gems of wisdom from uh, Imam Nursi. Uh, so just to remember again, because I feel it's very, very important. So if we take the power of passion, for instance, uh, it's excess. Remember, the middle way is no excess and no deficiency. And the excess and deficiency are qualitative. It's not about only uh, using something a lot. Uh, so the excess of this power is anger and arrogance. And it leads to uh, oppression and aggression. Um, the oppression and aggression of the weak, of the helpless, the defenseless, uh, for one's own selfish interests. And deficiency in uh, passion yields to Cowardice, the person becomes a coward. There is fear, but fear of things that should not be, are not to be feared. There is no true danger, or actually fearing them becomes the true danger. And timidity. Um, and it makes the individual an easy target, for instance, to their oppressors and transgressors. The person is too fearful, too timid. So remain silent in front of injustice and exploitation, uh, doesn't stand or cannot find the courage to stand for righteousness and for justice, and just complains, so uh, becomes a victim uh, or lives with a victim mentality and attracts more and more bullying and more and more oppression and aggression. And the middle way uh, of this power which is uh, reached when we reach it, when we follow the straight path, is courage. So it is courage to stand uh, our ground for stand for justice uh, without neither oppressing not nor letting others oppress us. And justice is this, neither oppressing nor letting others oppress us. And in the power of um, appetite, which is to attract benefits, excess leads to immorality, to not uh, being respectful of any limit and greed. And again, it, is, it leads uh, not only to transgress uh, one's fitra and um, innate boundaries but also transgressing others uh, for instance coveting uh, and when possible maybe appropriating what belongs to others exploiting others and this happens not only at the individual level but also on a larger scale like we can see in the corporate world uh, or in politics for instance uh, and you can see it in history the history of colonial colonialism and imperialism, a whole um, whole countries, whole communities can be subjected to aggression and oppression and exploitation, and all their belonging can be taken because 
the, the those who are uh, subject uh, subjecting them to this are uh, exceeding in anger and arrogance and in coveting what is not theirs they want everything and and that's like that's not attracting benefit you're transgressing uh the the, the boundary because it doesn't belong to you but you you still want it um, and the result is a lot of misery lots of injustice and uh, uh, large-scale misery like in wars for instance um, uh, and deficiency in this power in the power of appetites leads to apathy and lethargy and uh, no response to the blessings no pleasure no gratitude and no healthy response to injustice either so like people become um, irresponsive i don't know let's say like zombie as if like living dead kind of it's a kind of spiritual illness um, uh, it may seem that it's not as it may not be as um, aggressive as the excess but it is um, making excess possible it is giving free way to the transgressors to act uh, and the middle way is that of chastity and contentment and con being content and not tra transgressing uh, others chastity and maybe we can say morality and in the power of intellect the straight path is wisdom hikma. excess is not using one's intellect a lot quite quantitatively because you can someone can be using their intellect a lot but in a wise way no excess here is using uh, one's intellect um how do you say exceeding spoiling the balance using one's intellect in harmful ways in cunning ways um, like i said before in the corporate world uh, here also you can see how sometimes uh, or in politics there is no sincerity uh, there's no intention to help the common good but it's all uh, shown to the to the majority who do not who have deficiency in uh, intellect the foolish um uh, how do you say when you uh, fooling them deceiving them uh showing them uh, their own the, the showing them the uh, the what is actually beneficial only for the powerful, for the dom dominating uh, elite to be uh, for the, as if showing it as if it's for the common good, for the good of the community. And uh, so deficiencies in intellect is foolishness, which is, which can be very disastrous, not only at the individual level, but also at the communal and social uh, and the level of the society because in this state people can face all sorts of difficulties because of the difficulties that are consequences of their own uh, foolish choices that can be destructive that can end up harming themselves and others and they also the foolish can also become easy prey to the cunning of their exploitators like a capitalism system uh, telling you you need this and this and that and uh, making you a slave to get things that you may not even need but you don't stop there's no wisdom you don't stop and think do i really need it no everyone has it so uh, i'll have it as well but uh, people don't even stop and think how what is it going to cost me it's going to cost me um, my life being working for it all the time and by the time i pay for it there is something else that uh, we told is now the best for you uh, so this is all because how can the cunning deceive people they can deceive people because of their foolishness they're exploiting that foolishness and
And so you see in both personal life and social life, Sirat al-Mustaqim is the direct, the straight path of moderation and justice. It's the easiest, the shortest, and the most beneficial, the, the, the path that takes us to what is most beneficial for us in this world and in the next, inshallah. And deviation from the straight path, excess and deficiency, are full of troubles and harmful uh, to ourselves and uh, often more to others. Uh, I mean, people can create uh, hell on earth because of their uh, deviating from the path, the straight path of wisdom and, and justice and moderation. And so our prayer, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path, is a very comprehensive supplication, a dua that includes all Muslims, all believers, all human beings, all created beings, all created things, because we're saying, Ihdina, all of us, us, guide us. So we're praying for everyone to be guided to fulfill their potential and their life purpose by following the straight path of ease. And that's part of our, um, it is part of our fulfillment that everyone around us is also fulfilling their potential in life because that's how we are created. We are created in interconnection with everyone. Our happiness is uh, connected to everything and everyone's happiness around us. If uh, you're full, but your neighbors, you see people around you uh, dying of hunger, you cannot uh, enjoy uh, your, your food, your uh, privilege. Uh, either people either share with others and do something about it, or they run away and they don't want to hear and see the, the needy because it will spoil their own joy. So you can see that we are created in a way that um, we need to ask for guidance, not only for ourselves, but for everything, everyone and everything around us, yeah, inshallah. And this straight path is the path of blessings. In the last ayah, the last ayah, the seventh ayah, starts with Sirat al an'amta alayhim. The path of those you have blessed. So here the blessed is uh, an'amta. Uh, Na'ima, the verb, the, the, it's derived from the trilateral root uh, Na'ama, and the verb na'ima and na'ama is to live in comfort, to lead a life of ease. So you see here this discomfort, this, this ease that we already could feel in the straight path, in the meaning of the straight path, al-mustaqim, al-sirat al-mustaqim to lead a, a comfortable and carefree life, to be pleased, to be delighted by something, to be happy, to be glad about something, which is about, uh, uh, in Arabic, it's um, uh, to enjoy something, to take pleasure in something, are all uh, related to this, um, to this verb. So, na'ma, uh, is a life of ease, of good living, of comfort, of prosperity, of happiness, of enjoyment and delight. And ni'ma, which we use a lot, which is uh, usually we translate it as favor or blessings or grace. And ni'im, as a noun, it uh, means delight and bliss and comfort and ease and felicity and joy and happiness. As an adjective, Naim is gentle, tranquil, peaceful. And Nuuma is something is softness, smoothness, tenderness, delicacy. And Anama, which is the verb used here, the fourth form, 
uh, and Rama is to make good, to make nice, to make comfortable, to make pleasant. So here, an amta is God gives you, you give all those favors, all those blessings that make life um, comfortable and easy and delightful and happy and joyful and tranquil and peaceful. Subhanallah. So all these meanings, beautiful meanings, are all um, you have these connotations in that word an'ama. So an'ama ala, an'amta alayhim, an'amta ala is to translate it as to bestow favors, to bestow uh, blessings, uh, good. And it is those favors, those blessings, that good that makes uh, one's life easy and pleasant and happy and comfortable. Um, in in the Quran, this uh, this word and or words derived from Nahama are used many 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 times. One of them, for instance, in Surah Al Ghashiyah, which is when we are told "Wujuhun yawma idin naima," and it means on that day there will be faces radiant with joy, radiant with bliss. So naima is like bright with joy joyful, blissful. And um, the expression Jannat Naim is used, appears a lot in the Quran, uh, which means gardens of bliss, gardens of joy. So that's um, paradise. Which, uh, in uh, Surah um, Yunus, for instance, which is, I'll give only one example, because there are so many, but you can check Jadnat uh, al-Na'im, Gardens of Bliss, uh, as a description of paradise. In Surah Yunus, which is Surah uh, 10, in Ayah 9 and 10, we are told, truly, as for those who have believed and do righteous deeds. Many times this will happen. Uh, the people of paradise are the people who uh, have believed and do righteous deeds. And um, I remember um, I have uh, shared with you many uh, ayat, many verses on this topic in uh, when we were studying other surahs of the Qur'an. So here, again, we are told truly, as for those who have believed and do righteous deeds, their Rabb, their sustainer, guides them a right by means of their belief, of their iman, running waters will flow at their feet in gardens of bliss. And in that state of happiness, they will call out, um, Subhanaka. Um, okay, so translated as glory be unto you, but now I think you can... Um, appreciate subhanaka more than glory be unto you because tasbih is much more than that subhanaka uh, allahumma O oh god and uh, they would be answered with the greeting salam peace and their call will close with alhamdulillah rabbil alamin all praise and thanks are due to god the sustainer of all the worlds so you can see in these two short ayats how we have uh, belief and righteous deeds. People who believed and do righteous deeds, their sustainer, God is described as their Rabb. Their sustainer guides them. There is Hidayah here. Uh, so uh, this is Yehdihim uh, Rabbuhum. So there is guidance, they are guided. So we were, we are guided when we believe and doing the righteous deeds anyways is we do righteous deeds when we follow guidance. And so they are guided, this is how they are guided. They are guided by means of their Iman because without their Iman, it's like the, um, the heart, the inner GPS won't be working. 
because I'm not paying attention to it. So when there is Iman, there is that connection uh, with uh, the source of guidance. And so when there is that Iman and we are guided, then we are guided in this world and in the next and the destination are gardens of bliss, not gardens of trees and, and uh, whatever uh, we expect in gardens. It doesn't matter here. They are gardens of bliss, of joy, because that's what everyone um, needs at the end. We do everything in order to reach that state of bliss. And in, uh, we know we are rightly guided when we reach that state of uh, bliss. And in that state of happiness, they call out, Subhanallah, God is beyond any, any, um, anything that is less than perfect that we sometimes can imagine. Any, he's beyond anything like that. He, and they will be answered with the greeting, Salam, peace. Because that's when, that's the only way we can find true uh, peace. And outer peace can only be found when we find inner peace. And inner peace is only found through connecting with the source of peace, subhanAllah. And they will, they will be totally at peace and blissful. And they will say, And the last uh, prayer, the last supplication is, praise and thanks are due to God alone, God the sustainer of all the world. So you can see how beautiful these ayats are and how all these concepts are related to each other. We've seen... Um, since we started this uh, reflections on the Quran for a few years now, how all these uh, concepts are very tightly woven into each other. And uh, it's like a beautiful tapestry. And after a while, we start recognizing the, the beautiful patterns, uh, in, inshallah. And the blessings, the ni'mah, uh, the plural of ni'mah is ni'am, uh, one of the plural, let's say. Uh, the, the blessing we are told are outward and inward. In Surah Luqman, uh, which is Surah 31, Ayah 20, we are told, do you, do you not see that God has subjected all that is in the heavens and all that is on earth and has lavished upon you his blessing, his ni'am, both outward and inward. And yet, some people argue about God without having any knowledge or guidance and without any illuminating scripture. So this uh, blessings here, And uh, so you, and we can think of uh, outward and inward as visible uh, blessings and benefits and invisible, as well as physical and intellectual or spiritual, as well as usually uh, when we are um, living in Rafla, we think of blessing as things out there because we are disconnected from, we are disconnected from ourselves and therefore from our Rab. So the um, our perception is very limited. We think that things out there can be a blessing. And even that will depend on if I like it or not, and I'm not going there. Yeah. But the more um, aware we become, the more we realize that nothing out there is a blessing on its own. It's a blessing because I have the need for it, and I have the tools to interact with it. For instance, a beautiful uh, scenery is a blessing because I can appreciate it. I have a sense of appreciating beauty and forms and, and, and colors and everything. 
and I have uh, and, uh, I have a physical physically an eye and I have all those senses. So the scenery doesn't exist on its own out there. The blessing is always, uh, so it doesn't say aw, oh, it doesn't say or, it says and. So the ni'ma is always dhahiratan wa batinatan, outward and inward. And that's why the more uh, conscious we are, the more we realize that we are swimming in ni'ma. And so the more we realize this, the more we, we will stop, uh, we live in gratitude, we'll stop complaining. Because when we complain about uh, the things that we're complaining about are usually uh, things that we wish were this way or that way. We're not um, focusing on what is, but one, on what should be, according to what? According to our own imagination. Astaghfirullah. So we'll be too busy being grateful for the blessings here and now. Uh, and that's, uh, that's when we start living in a state of uh, gratitude, not being grateful from time to time. And the blessings we are told are provided and uh, what, how we are told to be grateful and thank God for his blessings and worship him alone. For instance, in Surah Al-Nahl, which is Surah 16, beautiful, beautiful Surah, but it's so long, I always uh, hesitate in, uh, in start, starting to study it together. It's uh, Surah 16. In Ayah 114, we are told, فَكُلُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا وَاشْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ So per partake of the lawful good things which God has provided for you as sustenance and thank God for his blessings. If it, it is truly him that you worship, if you worship him alone, if you truly worship him, let's say, if it's God that you truly worship. So partake and eat of all the lawful good things which God has provided you. So you have to be, is it true? Like it seems that there are things that I'm providing for myself, for my children, but is it true? How do I even uh, provide anything? Can I create from nothing? Do I have the power of being it is? No, uh, just by, because I'm following some means, it does not mean that I'm providing. So everything we have to, actually those means are supposed to be to the conscious, to the believer, to the muhsin. They are the signs, they are the ayat reminding us and showing us the way to the munhim, to the true bestower, to the true a bestower of favors and blessings. But when we are in Rafla, it seems like uh, right now I'm doing it. I um, provided this for myself, for others. And sometimes when I'm not involved, then God, God gave it to me. And uh, it's, become, it's a very dangerous uh, path because it's a path of shirk because uh, the moment I learned that, yeah, I was not involved, but other things were involved because we live in a world where things come through other means. And so uh, it will seem that rain comes because of a certain cycle and this and that. And then eventually nothing, uh, nothing uh, truly valuable uh, will be um, a direct blessing of God with that uh, shirki mindset. But when we question everything, we will realize that everything, whether I seem to be providing it or not, uh, is a blessing from God directly. And if you remember, I had given the example of water. Water cannot um, take care of my uh, thirst. Uh, 
It has no power, no knowledge, nothing. Uh, so it is created, life is given through water, thirst is being satisfied through water, but the one and all those uh, those actions, those events are actually ayat, they're actually signs um, reflecting the beautiful names of God, that he alone has the power and the knowledge and the wisdom and the compassion and the generosity uh, to take care of those events. And so we get to know him, everything becomes a mirror reflecting the divine names for the muhsin, for the ghafil, for the ones living in ghafla, they become like veils to, uh, to divine, the divine blessings. So here it says, and of course, if I do not perceive everything as directly, blessings directly bestow, bestowed to me, given to me by God, by my sustainer who is sustaining me through them, then my worship, my thank, my gratitude won't be to him. My heart will actually be attached to whatever I think is the source of that benefit, of that blessing. And even when I say Alhamdulillah, it won't be true uh, because my hamd, my, my thank and my gratitude and my praising will go for whatever I imagine to be the source of, my bene of the benefit I'm uh, benefiting from. And so the result will be that I'm not truly worshipping God, but worshipping other things and making them into idols, into partners with God. And that's why we are told, so like, use everything as long as it's lawful, it is halal. But it says the good things which God, Razaqakumullah, God has provided for you as sustenance. It means I have to be aware, mindful of who is providing me with this. And then washkuru ni'matallah and be grateful thank god for his blessings if you truly uh, if it is true truly him that you worship uh, in uh, the same surah surah al nahl surah 16 in ayah 120 to 123 uh, we're told truly ibrahim salam, was a community in himself exemplary devoutly obeying god turning away from all that is false and not being of the mushrikeen. Uh, he was not of those who scribe, who make shirk, let's say, who scribe partners with God. He was grateful for the blessings of God who had elected him and guided him on a straight, on through a straight path. And so we gave him good in this world. And in the life to come, he is among the salihin, the righteous. Then we reveal to you, follow the creed of Ibrahim who turned away from all that is false and was not of the mushrikeen, was not a mushrik, was not of those who ascribe partners with God. So as we've seen again and again in the Quran, in order for uh, there to be shukr, thanks and gratitude for, to God alone, there need to be no shirk. And interestingly in Arabic, it's shirk and shukr. So no shuk, shirk is first no shirk, so that there is shukr, there is uh, gratitude to God alone. And that is the Sirat al-Mustaqim. And it is on that Sirat al-Mustaqim that we are given good hasana in this world and we will be, inshallah, God makes Ibrahim السلام, of the salihin, the righteous in the next, in Akhira. Then we, reveal, we are told, follow the path of Ibrahim. And at the end of the path of Ibrahim, what is important about the path of Ibrahim is that he was Hanif, he turned away from all that is false, and he was and he was not of the mushriks. He was not a mushrik. He did not ascribe partners with God. So you see, that is again and again um, 
emphasized because there cannot be true tawheed and true following of the Sirat al mustaqim and true gratitude to God alone and therefore worshiping God alone and seeking help from him alone and following his guidance if we do not clear ourselves of shirk in the beginning. So it starts with clearing. Uh, he was not of the mushrikeen at the beginning and at the end, subhanAllah, because it's so important. So here the sirat al an'amta alayhim, the path of those you have, whom you have blessed. This ayah has a connection with all the previous ayat so far. Uh, as is in the case uh, with all the, the verses, the ayat of the Qur'an in general. Um, if you remember, in the Qur'an, I always um, repeat that the relationship between the verses and even between words is not linear. It's not only uh, from beginning to end. It's from any word to any other words anywhere in the Quran. Um, it's like a hologram. Uh, in a hologram, each piece contains the whole. Every part of a hologram contains the image of the whole object. And it's a three-dimensional object, so you can cut the corner of a hologram and still see the entire image to it. If you cut a lot, the image may not be as clear, but it's still there. And from every uh, angle, every viewing angle, you can see the image in a different perspective, just as you would the real uh, object. So each piece of hologram contains a particular perspective of the image, and at the same time, it also includes the entire object, subhanAllah. And always uh, the hologram always comes to my mind when I um, think of the Qur'an and the relationship between the, the ayat and between the words. Uh, so for instance, uh, in the Sirat al ladina An'amta Alayhim, the path of those whom you have blessed, is connected to uh, Alhamdulillah, all praise and thanks be to God, because the ni'ma, the ni'ma, the blessing that is uh, mentioned in uh, at the beginning of Ayah seven, is the corollary of hamd. Uh, you need to have ni'ma in order to have hamd. So the fact that we are saying Alhamdulillah, thanks and praise be to God, it means there is a ni'mah is already there. And now it is mentioned explicitly. And in Rabbul um, Alameen, uh, the owner and sustainer of all the world, there is also a um, how do you say, an implicit and indirect, well, maybe not indirect, but implicit uh, indication to the ni'mah, to the blessings. Why? Because sustaining rububiyyah uh, and raising, remember that uh, raising is part, raising something from one point to a better, uh, more fulfilled state from one state to another is part of rububiyyah. So the, the sustaining and raising, rububiya, is or unfolds through the continual bestowal, the giving of blessings, of ni'mah. It's a, or we can call it the bestowal of blessings is in'am. So there is, uh, if there is rububiya, there must be in'am because rububiya uh, happens, occurs through in'am. The, the very, yeah, that's how we recognize rububiyah. We see the, in the, the ni'mah and we recognize that uh, someone is sustaining and, ra and raising. 
and uh, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most merciful, the compassionate, also is related to or point indicates Sirat al An'amta Alayhim. Because uh, the recipients of Ni'mah, the recipients of blessings, uh, are themselves Um, or, well, they they um, show the rahma. So the ni'ma is the blessings is a how would you say a uh, an embodiment of rahma. And not only the the ni'ma is the blessing is an embodiment of rahma. But also the people who received the, these blessings, especially the people like the prophets and the righteous, the salihin, they they show the rahma in their way of being in the world and in their way of being role models for others. They embody the blessings of rahma. And they show to others the way to Rahma in a merciful way. So, so far, uh, it's not a, um, how do you say, it's not a surprise that suddenly we learn that the straight path is the path, path of those uh, who, uh, those who have been, you have blessed. So from the very beginning, uh, we were prepared for for this, so it comes as no surprise. Everything before that was uh, pointing, indicating that this is a path of blessings, a path of uh, mercy, a path of rahma. And. Um, Uh, what was the, the ayah after that? Rahman Rahim, uh, Malik Yomidin. So in Malik Yomidin, honor uh, and um, what did we say for Malik Yomidin? Honor and something else, Lord or something of the day of judgment. I think. Sorry. Sorry? Sovereign? Uh, maybe, yeah, sovereign is good as well. I just uh, wonder which one I had chosen before. <laughs> oh, because I had used owner and either lord or sovereign, maybe, yeah, thank you, of the Day of Judgment, because you remember Malik had two uh, meaning. Uh, and in Malik, Maliki or Medin here, Dean, which is not only the day of judgment, the day of when uh, everything's uh, truth and reality becomes clear. But Dean also, let's loosely <laughs> translate it as religion. <laughs> but you know that it does not mean only religion in that uh, very religion is, has a narrow meaning. But as a way of life, it's a way of life, a way of living with divine guidance, a way of living mindfully, uh, being great, um, receiving the gifts of Rahma, the blessings, and being grateful and uh, seeking help from God alone and worshiping Him alone and being grateful and praising Him alone. So this deen, this way of living itself is a great blessing. Being guided to this way of living is itself a, a ni'mah, a great blessing. And we worship, uh, we worship is also um, connected to Ni'mah because worship is the response to uh, Ni'mah and it's, it's the response to Ni'mah and it also attracts Ni'mah. So those whom uh, those whom you have uh, bestowed blessings, you have blessed, are the people foremost in worship. 
because they are the ones who uh, are aware the most that everything is a ni'mah, even um, enjoying the ni'mah, appreciating it is also a ni'mah, subhanAllah. And we seek help also because those whom you have blessed, the people who are blessed with, the, you have favored with your blessings, they have been graced with uh, success, falah, in response to their request for help. And so when we say guide us, um, we, we are asking for uh, guidance from God and we have an idea of what we want because we say these are our role models, for instance, the prophets, the righteous, their, their followers, and we want to be guided on that way, their way. Their way is the Sirat al-Mustaqim. Otherwise, we wouldn't really have a clear idea of what this Sirat al-Mustaqim is. And that's why in um, Ayah 90 of Surah 6, we are told, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ هَدَ اللَّهُ شَبِهُذَاهُ مَقْتَدِهُ it says, those are the ones, those are the ones whom God has guided, follow then their guidance. So uh, God is telling us here are the describing us the prophets and the messengers, and then saying, these are the people whom have uh, God has guided, and you can see. Um, how they have been guided, you can see how it transforms who they are, how they are, how they speak, how they behave, how they live. And so everywhere, the rahmah and the blessing and the ni'mah uh, and the guidance shows in these muhsins, they are uh, people who live with ihsan, uh, with goodness, and so we are told, follow then their guidance. Of course, their guidance is divine guidance because they are not following their own guidance. They are following divine guidance. But for us, it becomes, they become like um, role models, exemplars, easy. It will be easy for us to uh, figure out and understand what's going on. And the straight path, the is also related to this because to this ayah, the beginning of ayah seven, those whom you have blessed, and therefore to the receiving of blessing, to the straight path being a path of blessings, because clearly the straight path is, uh, is the path that they followed. And they are the people who have received these blessings and these blessings that are not uh, restricted to this world but blessings that look to the hereafter as well and blessings that are the most valuable the most meaningful not like uh, uh, not in term a qual quant qualitatively because we may think of blessing as oh they have these nice buildings okay so you can be miserable in a nice building so in itself, the nice building is not the blessing. It can, it may, it may not. But these people are truly blessed. So their way is clearly the straight, the straight path. That's what they follow. So this is an example. So they, um, so they are, so carry on on the same way, we are told. It's like, and in the word path, sirat, uh, remember I had said sirat is a uh, paved way, a paved and clear way. It's like there's no obstruction. It's open, it's clear. And um, so that those who travel down that path, uh, and, and it has, uh, how do you say, on both sides of the way, if the not restrictions, how do you say when a path has sides? Anyone? anyone? So 
So the, side, the path is clear, but on the side, like if you are going on the highway, if the, if the car goes out of the highway, often it won't be able to... Uh, there is no way like you won't be able to use it or use it very difficulty. So that way we are made to uh, make it easier for us to remain on the way and um, so that we don't stray out, we don't stray out of the way. Anyways, I don't know if I could make it clear, but... And in those whom there is الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ so الَّذِينَ, those whom, is a relative pronoun, and uh, those. And usually we use the relative pronouns to describe something that is known, known to the audience at least, to the listener. If I say, can you give me back the book that I had, uh, that I bought yesterday, that I had given you yesterday? So that there means it's a relative clause. I am defining, describing the book. So it makes uh, these people known to, the, to us, to the listener. And this is an indication that they have been, these people who have been blessed have been made known in this surah up to now, that they have been made known in the Qur'an in, in general, and that they are known to the public in general anyways, um, especially like the prophets and the messengers. Everyone somehow has a, an idea about them. It, it is also an indication to their station, their, it's a high exalted station, and usually uh, often, people will uh, associate uh, prophets and messengers with bringing light and healing and truth and something beneficial to humanity. And the fact that الَّذِينَ, those, is plural, indicates not only uh, the many messengers and prophets, but also their followers, people who uh, follow in their path um, and so it indicates also the possibility of following their way. So we don't say, oh, they are the prophets and the messengers, and we are only lowly people. So, you know, Nefis, the ego likes making an excuse like that. And you say, we are lowly people, we make mistakes, and okay now, we don't even make the any effort to follow the the straight path. It's not that way. If it is told to us, it means everyone has that potential and it's an invitation. So in this uh, area, everyone is invited to follow uh, their way, to follow the Sirat al-Mustaqim, to follow the path of blessings. And the the tense that's used, you have blessed an amta alayhim, there is a hint to, uh, for us uh, to pray for ni'mah. If this path is the, is, the, is the path of those you have blessed, it means, and it is you here, it's actually thou, anta, it's singular, it's very intimate, it's not uh, in the beginning of the surah, remember, it was all God, he, he. And now suddenly we're addressing God directly and we're not even using the plural you, but the singular thou. So it's very, um, very close and very intimate uh, prayer and um, asking God. So it's like asking God, like you are the, the mun'im, you are the the giver, the bestower of blessings, and in your rahma, in your, yeah, you have bestowed blessings 
on these people, on others. So please bestow it on me again. Give me blessings as well. Um, even though I may not be the best, I am not actually the best worshippers. I forgot most of the time. I forget to be grateful. But please still bestow your ni'ma on me because I am a powerless abd and you are my omnipotent, merciful Rabb, sustainer. It reminds me of uh, the dua of uh, Waysa al Qarani. Uh, I am your Abd. I know I am, uh, you are my Rabb, and Rabbi wa al Abd, that you are my sustainer. Why? Because I look at myself, I am a Abd. Um, and I have needs. I'm powerless, and I have all, I need everything actually. And you are the munificent, the generous provider. So it is an invitation to ask to be part of those people who have been blessed because that's what we long for. We, not only what we long for, we want to be blessed from one perspective, from a less, another perspective, it is a time and invitation for us to uh, become aware, to acknowledge that we are being blessed. We have been blessed, whether I am, we are aware of it or not, we are being blessed. So we don't have to ask for new blessings, but it's almost like we are asking to be aware of the blessings that we are already um, lavished with, that we are, everything is Such a merciful <coughs> rub. Okay, Okay, for some reason, uh, sorry, Zoom has uh, disconnected. So I don't know when it was uh, disconnected. Uh, the last thing I was talking about is that uh, when we uh, read the الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ The Sirat al-Mustaqeem, the straight path, is the path of those you whom you have blessed, you have bestowed your blessings. Uh, on whom you have bestowed your blessings. This is in uh, um, a hint, an indication, uh, telling us, or inviting us to uh, pray for blessings. And also it is a reminder that we are already the beneficiaries of uh, so, so many blessings. So it's an invitation to waken up and and realize uh, that everything uh, is a blessing 
and also to ask for uh, whatever we need from God, not from uh, because we think we are taking care of our needs through other means, but we realize that all those means are uh, signs to the Rabb, uh, reminding us that we have only one Rezak, one provider, one sustainer. Um, also, uh, according to Imam Nursi, he, uh, in his uh, tafsir of Surat Al-Fatiha, uh, he says the path of those whom you have blessed sirat uh, alladhina an'amta alayhim he connects it to ayah uh, 69 of surah an-nisa surah 4 and that's because there is a well known principle of tafsir al quran which is that parts of the quran expound and explain one another and in this uh, ayah uh, we're told الذين أنعمت عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين. and so uh, those upon whom uh, God has those whom God has blessed or those upon whom God has uh, bestowed blessings and it tells us who they are the prophets. Uh, and was Siddiqeen and those who never deviates from the truth and those who uh, bear witness, bore witness to the truth through with their lives or you can sh shuhada. Shuhada can have two meanings, martyrs or shuhada, those who make the shahada and the martyrs are the ones who make the shahada through their lives, with their lives and the righteous ones and was salihin. So, uh, when he, uh, when Imam Nursi makes the tafsir of الَّذِينَ uh, أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ He says those whom there, they are the, the four categories of people described in Ayah 69 of Surah 4. And so the four categories uh, who have received the blessings of divine guidance, which is an nabiyin the prophets. For instance, Prophet Muhammad uh, and the prophets are the leaders of the, all the other classes, all the other categories, let's say. Was Siddiqeen, those who never deviated from the truth and who comes to mind is uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr was called the voracious, the Siddiq. And Shuhada, the witnesses or the martyrs who testify to the truth with their lives. Uh, for instance, uh, Umar ibn al Khattab and Uthman and Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhum, may God be pleased with them. And the Salihin is everyone who follow in their path who follow the straight path so these rightly guided four categories of people he all he talks also about the levels of certainty in their uh, iman but i'm not going there uh, they all of them they have uh, on they have embodied the truth of tawhid of divine unity and they also have thought, taught it to the people. And the teaching could be uh, explicit teaching or implicitly through their way of being and living. And in order to embody the truth of Tawheed and worship God alone, uh, our soul, Rab, our only sustainer and helper, uh, and thank him and be grateful to him alone, they sought his help and so we need to also seek his help and follow his guidance that leads to the straight path and this straight path is a path of ease it's the shortest path to bliss the shortest path to goodness in this life and in the next so it's such uh, like not giving it a try would be just so foolish 
and taking it seriously is what wisdom uh, requires. So next week, uh, inshallah, um, how about we all share uh, what touched us in this uh, surah? Next week, we will finish the Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim, ghayr al maghdubi alayhim wal dhalim, the second part of the last ayah. But also, if everyone uh, reflects on what touched you the most in this surah, for me, for instance, it's been, uh, I'll share with you like uh, what I'm talking about. Ihdina uh, sirat al mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. Uh, it's like, more and more, I realize that it's a prayer. Uh, so now it's a prayer that I keep repeating. I, I just like so sweet and so uh, it brings me lots of joy to repeat it. And because, can you imagine, this is a prayer for everything. You're praying for everything to be guided on the path of fulfillment. Everything you're asking, you, you know that uh god is doing that and now you it's a way of acknowledging that and wishing that everything be guided on the path of fulfilling their aptitude their potentials in the best way in the easiest possible way and as the prayer is accepted the result is the manifestation of rububia what we and it is it brings us joy when we see uh, if you see a child growing into uh, with lots of terbia with lots if you see a flower growing into a beautiful flower but with human beings it's even more beautiful the more there is wisdom the more there is uh, surrender the more there is iman the more there is ihsan the more it brings us joy not only when it happens to us but when it happens uh, around us and so as the prayer is uh, accepted we can see the rububiyah uh, manifesting the through the many many um, combinations let's say of beautiful different beautiful names and we can see that through the creation in general, but when, uh, when, particularly nowadays, when I repeat this area, it's more than just seeing rububia in the creation in general, but seeing that everything is being guided to what's best in the easiest way. Uh, I, I'm still at all, uh, and still letting it sink down um, still trying to uh, experience it and taste it and um, let it do its work uh, on me i'm not trying to understand it because this is something beyond uh, understanding something that we witness something that transforms us something that we uh, that brings us joy, something that fulfill, fulfills us, that satisfies us. It's like food. You don't understand food. You eat it. You enjoy it. So this is a kind of spiritual food, uh, inshallah. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alimun hakim wa akhiru da'wahum. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين حد من رسله وقال سمعنا وطعنا وفرانك ربنا وليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين آمين والحمد لله رب العالمين
Thank you. Jazakumullah khair, Dr. Yamina. Um, you suggested that next time we share what uh, this journey of uh, Surah Al-Fatiha brought to us, or especially touched yes. to us. I want to recommend that uh, we actually uh, get volunteers from today to share next week so that we have at least a couple of people who would share, inshallah, for sure. Um, any any volunteers? Can I take down any names just to share what you found next time? Not now, but next time. Anyone? It doesn't have to be long or something. Yeah, it doesn't have to be like a minute or two or whatever you're comfortable with. I'll share, inshallah. Who <laughs> was this? Aisha Noor. Aisha Noor. Okay, sure. Nothing on Aisha Noor. Okay. Uh, who else? And I can share as well. This is Maha in Bloomington. Wonderful, Maha. Thank you, Maha, Hatije, and Aisha Noor. Um, anyone from the brothers? Not that it makes a difference. <laughs> Brother or sister are welcome, but anyone else? Okay, so at least we have three people, and if other people would like to share, that also will be very nice, inshallah. What uh, touched us for from this uh, journey in Surah Fatiha, inshallah. And um, so I want to re remind you all that we are excited to have uh, a two-day um, event in uh, Bloomington, Indiana, very soon, inshallah, in a month, in less than a month, March uh, in March, and um, we just go to our Facebook page to see details. You need you can register. You should register via um, the website. It's a very basic.